do it, more likely than not, you're going to have the entire monetary and economic structure collapse on your head. It may collapse on your head anyway. But if it does, and this part is organized here before it collapses, you will have something that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Right? You'll have very, very many localities in the country organized in such a way as perhaps to be able to deal with the economic dislocation. I give you the Shenandoah Valley. If I could organize, and I'm saying this hypothetically, I'm not doing the organizing, but if someone such as myself could organize the entire Shenandoah Valley, it wouldn't make much difference if we had a major monetary collapse, because we could feed ourselves indefinitely. All right? Which I take it is, is job one as they used to say in Ford, right? Job one is features, so you'll last from one day to the next. All right? You might not be able to do that in Richmond. You might not. You wouldn't be able to do that in Richmond. You'd have to depend upon FEMA, which means what, how long to last about a week? All right, whatever. <laughs> so you can look at this from the point of view of, say, the, the monetary system. You'd say, we know we have that crisis right now. It's coming sooner rather than later, much sooner. The next level below the monetary crisis is what? The food security crisis or the transportation crisis, or the petroleum crisis, anything that's tied into the breakdown of those markets, and major depression. What would a major depression look like in this country today, compared to 30s, compared to the 1930s? It would be much, much worse, because the 1930s, people were much more self-reliant. It was a much more agriculturally centered economy. There wasn't the level of gross specialization a very fine spec. You didn't have people that only knew how to write certain kind of computer codes and they couldn't do anything else. Huh. Uh -huh. Right? And when the computers all break down, you're not going to use them. They go, what do these people do? I guess you hand them a shovel. Right? What else can they do? These Silicon Valley uh, techies. Right? Now, if they were in a militia unit, they would have learned something else to do. At least they would have learned which end of the shovel to use. <laughs> right. Now, I give you the example of the Swiss. Swiss have had this kind of system since they were mercenaries in the 1300s. Did it work for them? Well, I don't know. They, they weren't involved in World War I. They weren't involved with World War II. I mean, they maintained their neutrality pretty well. I guess they didn't run into any major uh, catastrophic events, but they certainly were prepared for any one of them. And this is very much, in the ultimate analysis, very much like an insurance policy. Right? You buy insurance, car insurance, home insurance. You want an accident? No. Many people never have an accident, right? But if you didn't have that insurance when the accident comes, you have to be trouble, perhaps. Now, this one, we know the train wreck is about to happen. This is actually cheating the insurance company in a way, because we know this is going to happen as we sign up for that payment. And the first one is the monitor. So there is no way, as I am standing here, that this crisis is not going to go, whatever bad word you want to put to it. It's going to become worse and worse. And whether it goes first to a depression or first goes to hyperinflation, then a depression, there's going to be a breakdown of the monetary banking system because it's gone beyond the point of its own instability, shaking itself to pieces. So there really is no choice about this unless you want the top-down control out of Washington. And several years ago, I started right here re-entering myself on newswithviews.com up the archive there. The very first article I wrote, someone finally convinced me to write to the internet. I didn't like doing that, but they finally convinced me. The first article I wrote was on this, the interface of the homeland security problem and the bank crisis. And I asked the question, why would this huge homeland security apparatus be, be built up in Washington, D.C. just because of a few terrorists hiding in caves in Afghanistan? Why? Especially when they were closing the borders. So that the, you know, if they could get out of the caves, they could come through Mexico. <laughs> what was it aimed at? Why would they need this huge apparatus? And the answer is, there are no fools there. They know that the monetary system is inherently unstable. They know they're going to have this kind of economic and social dislocation. They know that will lead to instability on a very high level, and they want to control it with police state repression. And they need an apparatus to do that. Now, they can't come out and tell you we're building this so that we can impose police state repression on you because the banking system that we told you was so scientific that it would never collapse is collapsing. They can't tell you that, can they? <laughs> well, they might be able to tell some Americans that. They say, oh, okay, that's fine. What do I sign? As long as I can still watch NFL football, I don't care. Even if I'm you know, on the labor camp, that's okay. Boy. Because the TV's up there. That's what'll happen. Well, all right, perhaps. 
Perhaps. But if, you know, if you think that way, you're in the wrong meeting. Maybe <laughs> 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 you're part of Homeland Security meeting. But this is their goal, is to create this apparatus under a real false flag. Osama bin whomever he is. <laughs> I don't know how many years he's been dead. He's mummified now. <laughs> he's been dead for four years, I think. Or whatever. It wouldn't make any difference. They'll find somebody else to put this place. To create this paranoia, orchestrated paranoia, and set up this structure which goes all the way down from, who is it now, Janet Napolitano? Yeah. Is the one who's been yeah. appointed by, by Obama? Okay. Well, Chertoff. I guess Chertoff's still in there until Tuesday. From Chertoff and Napolitano, it goes all the way down to those three guys in the black ninja outfits in small town USA with the sni sniper rifles on the SWAT team. Why do they need these SWAT teams in, in Nowhereville City? Who are they going to shoot with those 50 caliber rifles?